Beastly Gamer original. What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome back to the Beastly Gamer channel. Thank you all for joining me today for more Beastly original content. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about pay to play online. Uh, this is something that is a thing uh, and if you are a console gamer, more than likely, unless you are on a Nintendo console, you've been paying to play online for a while. Xbox Live is a pay to play online service. Uh, PlayStation Network, which didn't used to be a pay service, now is a pay service on PlayStation 4. A lot of people have an issue with this pay to play online situation with these consoles. And I honestly am one of them. I honestly don't think it's fair. I think in a lot of ways it's unethical. I do have my own unique perspective on it and I wanted to share it with you guys in this beastly original content. So I hope you guys enjoy, sit back, relax, and let's talk about pay to play online. Paying Sony and Microsoft to play games online is a thing. And the strange part of it is that paying for what you get for free is something that has been happening for a long, long time. What's that you say? Beastly Gamer, the internet is not free. I pay my bills every month and it ain't cheap, so don't say my internet's free. <laughs> That's not exactly what I mean, guys. You see, I remember walking through a grocery store with my dad over 20 years ago and seeing bottled water stacked and ready for sale. My dad said, son, this is so, so stupid. People will pay for what they can get for home straight out of the tap for free. I will never buy bottled water. I am not that stupid. That's what my dad said. And for the most part at the time, he was right. Water was in abundance everywhere. It was at parks, restaurants, at home, and virtually everywhere you went, you could get water for free. Now everybody buys their water, including my dad, and I do too. The thing is, you become accustomed to something, even something that you're totally against in the beginning, you become accustomed to it, it becomes the norm, and suddenly it isn't a hurdle or something that you even have to think heavily about, it just becomes a part of your life. Fast forward 20 plus years to the modern day and look what we have here. You go to the library, you can get free internet, there's internet cafes, McDonald's has free internet, bookstores have internet, hospitals have internet, and tons of other places have free Wi-Fi internet for the public to use. So in a sense, internet is almost as free as water was years ago. And add the fact that most Americans pay for their internet already on their cell phone or their home networks, and suddenly paying for a paid gaming network does seem like you're wasting money. In essence, paying for what you already paid for, which would actually be free since you already paid for it. The whole idea of pay to play online gaming is an old tradition. One that started with the MMO craze and games like World of Warcraft. Years after the idea of paid subscription gaming services, Microsoft saw the trend of MMOs and how some of these games were not only raking in huge amounts of revenue from a base of dedicated players, but also how these dedicated players were willing to consistently pay for a monthly premium to play the game that they love. And so Microsoft saw this trend and, and they took a chance, they took a gamble and they decided to try their hand at grabbing some of that MMO money, that money that people were used to forking over on a monthly basis. And so in 2002, Xbox Live was born. A bare bones version of what we know now as Xbox Live, the O2 version offered Xbox gamers a chance to play with other gamers on a home console. And at this time, gaming online was very, very new in the home console space. Xbox Live also sported one of the first friends lists and it gave gamers on the Xbox a unified identity across all games. This identity later became known as your gamer tag. As time went by, the pay to play MMO genre boomed and blossomed, drawing out more and more gamers willing to part ways with their hard earned dollars. During this time, online gaming was becoming ever more popular with games like Halo 2, Ghost Recon, and many, many more games on the Xbox. And in 2005, Microsoft announced the Xbox 360. It was a new beefed up console with a new beefed up Xbox Live service with a new perk, voice chat. That's right, the thing we're so used to now. And with seven generation titles like Call of Duty 2 hitting consoles, the want and need for an Xbox Live service became even greater for gamers. This new idea and reality of playing online with your friends while chatting right from the comfort of your living room became ever more attractive as people got their hands on the newer and faster service. Microsoft knew that the success of online games like Halo and Call of Duty was driving the sales of their service and, and after only a few years, paying to play online became the norm and the Xbox Live became a household name. And in 2006, Microsoft reported an overall profits increase of $4.5 billion. And they're paying Xbox Live subscribers surpass 2 million in the very first year. 
Sony, in an effort to appeal to gamers' wallets and bring gamers over to their side, during the PlayStation 2 era, launched their flagship network service, PlayStation Network. Sony, while not up to snuff technically with Microsoft, launched their service, which allowed players to play certain games online with the help of an additional hard drive and a network adapter. Sony took many years to realize just how many gamers were in fact willing to pay for a service that should be free, and they took over four years before launching their premium service, PlayStation Plus, which offered free content and games at a cost of $49.99 a year. Xbox Live continued to grow and become the standard for online gaming on the Xbox 360, and the PlayStation Network grew as well, with the competing gaming companies hitting close to 90 million consoles sold each by the end of their respective life cycles. There are millions of gamers connected online during this time, and in 2013, the eighth generation consoles were on the horizon and Sony had a stroke of amazing, amazing luck during the reveal of the PlayStation 4. Now gamers who had become accustomed to playing online for free would have to pay a mandatory price of $49.99 a year to play online. And this was a new requirement of PlayStation Network. The new cost also came with added and exclusive content as well as two free games per month across all PlayStation consoles. This is something that was later mirrored by Xbox to stay competitive. Gamers did feel that burn, but the revelation of Microsoft's Xbox One plans of DRM and always being online and the inability to share games and so much more made the cost of Sony's PlayStation Plus look like a small hurdle to jump instead of the mountain that it would have been in any other circumstance. Fast forward to now, with Sony's recent announcement that their PlayStation Plus service will be getting a price hike of $59.99 a year, with increases in the three-month membership as well, making the longtime PlayStation gamers pretty upset at the prospect of paying more for no real improvements to the service. And here we are, years after these online console gaming services have arrived and laid their roots into our living rooms, gamers are understandably upset, and the reality that we shouldn't have to pay to play online is finally sinking into the heads of thousands of gamers. The PC online infrastructure is a perfect example of how things should work on consoles, but unfortunately, companies take advantage of willing consumers. Just imagine for a second if you bought a new Apple PC, and when you took it out of the box and you set it up and turned it on, a pop-up hits the screen saying, thank you for your purchase. We at Apple are so happy to invite you into our family. There is a whole new world of emails, web browsing, chatting, and official Apple applications waiting for you to enjoy. Whenever you're ready, we can get you started with your new Apple Network Pass. The Apple Network Pass allows you to enjoy tons of official Apple content and applications, as well as browse the web, receive and send email, chat with friends, play games online, and so much more. As a new buyer of an official Apple product, you will receive a two-week free trial of Apple Network Pass. After that trial period has ended, you will need to purchase your Apple Network Pass membership at a cost of $59.99 a year, $25.99 for a three-month period, and $9.99 a month for a one-month membership. We at Apple would like to congratulate you on your amazing new purchase. Now, how the hell we react to something as insane as that? Honestly, guys, we would flip out, we protest, picket, and parade with torches to Apple headquarters and demand that they change this draconian network pass idea. Why would we be upset though? Would we be upset at the cost? No, I don't think the cost would be the issue. The, the reason we'd be livid about this whole situation is because a computer comes with the capability to go online right out of the box. There's no need for Apple or Sony or Microsoft to try to create a middleman position when there's absolutely zero reason to have one in the first place. In effect, we'd be paying for our internet twice. We pay our internet service provider already, and for the most part it's not cheap. The cost of halfway decent internet with decent speeds can be easy north of a thousand dollars a year. The PlayStation and Xbox are just like a PC. They come ready to play online, right out of the box. So what exactly are we paying them for? These companies are adding a perceived value by giving away free games monthly. And this is honestly a very genius move on the parts of Microsoft and Sony. You see, if a consumer downloads tons of free games and then later decides to unsubscribe from PlayStation Network or Xbox Live, all those games will still be in their library, but they'll be inactive and unusable until that particular person pays again for their Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. So it's a very genius move to keep people in. It's the carrot on the stick. 
And so again I ask, why are we paying Sony and Microsoft for our internet and paying our internet providers at the same time? It's very, very simple, guys. When pay to play online first made the scene, it was a new and exciting way to play. A way that virtually no console gamers had experienced. That entry cost was a small price to pay before we understood exactly what we were paying for. In the beginning, gamers thought that playing online through consoles was something so special that only the companies behind the consoles understood how to make it work. Now we're used to paying for a subscription for a service that honestly shouldn't exist. We pay Sony and Microsoft to actually be an unneeded middleman. Online gaming shouldn't cost us a thing, but the job of a company is to find out who's spending money, what they're spending it on, and exactly how they can get it. Those early MMO financials piqued Microsoft's interest quite a bit, and a series of unfortunate events have led us here. Now, with higher costs right around the corner and no real improvements in sight for any services, what can we do? Unfortunately, I don't believe we can do anything. We lack the understanding of what we bought into all those years ago when online gaming was new. The sad truth is that we got us here, and Microsoft, Sony, and more than likely Nintendo with the NX will be reaping the benefits for years to come. Will this situation ever change? I'd like to think possibly so, but I don't think anytime soon. With Xbox and PlayStation being closed markets with well-established pay-to-play online infrastructures that have stood the test of time, they have really no reason to change a thing. All we can hope for, in the console space anyway, is that they continue to soften the blow of an annual charge by adding new and exciting features to their services. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this topic. Paying to play online is a thing that shouldn't exist, but we've already fed the beast, and more than likely, this trend isn't going anywhere. Now, I know there's a counter argument to this entire topic, that PlayStation Network and Xbox Live are services that deserve rendered payment. And that I do understand that businesses and companies are in the business to make money. The reason that I have such an issue with PlayStation and Xbox and their paid service is that things like Steam exist. And when I can buy a game on Steam and load up Call of Duty or load up DayZ and play online with my friends for absolutely free, it makes you question the validity of the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live premiums. $59 a year, some would say that's not a whole lot of money. To some people, that's a lot of money. And if Steam can do it for absolutely free, you gotta ask yourself why you're paying so much for PlayStation and Xbox services. Please let me know what you think about this topic in the comment section below. I'd like to thank you all for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up, show support for the channel, and join the Facebook group, follow me on Twitter, and tell all your friends about me. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Take a, take a, take a, take a, take a